Hey guys, uh, Luke here, uh, aka Stone Mosaic, with another uh, comic review. This time of Jock Savage, the Man of Bronze. Um, this is um, was this is a, uh, released as a trade by DC um, of the um, Marvel eight issue uh, mini series from the mid seventies. I want to say 74, uh, written by Stephen Goldhart, drawn by Ross Andrew, among um, other artists. This, this was basically um, four stories in, in two parts each. And they're basically um, um, adaptations of some of the pulp novels in which uh, Doc Savage appeared along with his um, his, his band of um, uh, adventurers. Let me get the page here. Uh, Monk, Ham, Long Tom, Rennie, and Johnny. Um, I found that as the series went on, it got a little more convoluted and not quite as strong as it started out with, which was uh, The Man of Bronze, which I believe was the, was probably the first Doc Savage novel, but it involved um, um, sort of a Central American um, warriors and um doc savage was somehow part of um somehow like inherited some of their land or something like that it was, you know, it was, it was kind of a strange story but um um it was it was kind of a, a classic it, adventure tale where some of the other later stories were, were a, little, a, little, a little convoluted um second story was death and silver which is silver clad um Henchmen were basically doing the bidding of this shipping magnate. Hopefully, that isn't isn't spoiling too much. It was kind of kind of strange how that sort of ended up, and that sort of was a, a turning point in um, this trade. Um, because the next one was the monsters, which is very strange. Had monsters popping out of out of um, the bombs of houses, and um, it was just really. Really weird. I'm trying to remember always like what happened now. It was just so, so strange. Sorry, this isn't the most uh, descriptive review. Um, but then the last uh, story was Brand of the Werewolf, where apparently there were some werewolves that were uh, just men in costumes and others that were never um, you know, unmasked, if you will. So maybe they were actually real uh, werewolves and it involved some sort of like cube. They held like a treasure map, and uh, that part was okay, but, it, but it's just, it was a very circuitous route that it took to sort of accomplish its goals. And I'm sorry if this, if this isn't totally, um, I'm trying, to, trying to think, it's, I don't know, it just seemed like it was unnecessarily complicated for it, for an adventure book. Before I, I move on, I just wanted to, I can give you a little sense of the art of Ross Andrew, which is serviceable. It's fine. He does it with a book with a bunch of other co-artists. I wanted to show you uh, uh, something where I, th I thought was sort of the book's downfall. This didn't happen too much, but it, uh, here it is. You have a one, I, have a, I have an action scene where um, Doc Savage and Matt are um, pursuing this it's plain, and look at all the dialogue here. Is this really necessary in a pulp novel? And again, I'm not an expert on the pulps, but um, to my mind, it should be action first, dialogue and, and exposition sparingly, um, if at all. You know, it, it just seems like I try to be a little, little too verbose for its good, and I think that's sort of its downfall. And I don't know if there were better pulp. Um, novels that, that could have been adapted. I don't know if Doc Savage had any other stories that went, that went beyond this. Um, I'm trying to think. I remember looking up this series on, um, I think it was like Comic Book DB to kind of see what, see um, where this um, story had, had come from. That's when I discovered that, oh, it's actually um, by Marvel, something that you will not um, realize if you've, if you, if you just read the book all the way through, nothing about Marvel is mentioned anywhere. I think, it, I think it's created, the copyright was created to Advanced Magazine, 
publications with which I think is technically Marvel's publishing name or, or, or maybe it was their, their name at the time. I don't really know. Um, I don't know. I, I thought this is kind of an uneven series. I felt this was the same way, but the uh, Showcase Presents Doc Savage also came out around the same time, I think. Um, I think just sort of um, uh, because DC had the license for um, uh, for their um, Doc Savage, the Spirit. I don't know if they had the Shadow again. This is sort of um, I think mid two thousands when they did the whole first wave thing. I think because I remember that the stuff came out in two thousand nine or two thousand ten apparently, and, that, and that's where around when this trade came out. Um, the stories are are, are decent and have a good amount of action, so, so this book isn't all that bad. I'd probably give it, yeah, 6 out of 10. Just isn't quite as effective as I think um, it, it should have been, because I've, I've read some some uh, pretty good Doc Savage adventure stories in the past, but unfortunately these weren't really translated well, or they just, I don't know, didn't work for me for some reason. Getting a little bit of a preview here, my next uh, review. The story is a... Um, um, a series that I just heard about I think, like a week or two ago. I haven't read too much of uh, Warren Ellis. This is a book that he did with J.H. Wells with third called Desolation Jones. And from what I found out, this is the first six issues of when it turned out to be an only eight issue series. The, the um, apparently it was a bi monthly series that then sort of just stopped coming out eventually after this first trade. So it's an incomplete series. I don't know if I'll read. Uh, issue seven and eight, how easily those are found, or if I can just find a synopsis of, of them somewhere, but we'll see uh, how that goes. But just did to uh, see what that, that's all about. I think I've kind of um, avoided most of the detailed uh, plot summaries, so hopefully that will that'll leave my mind open for whatever is in that book. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that's all for me, and. Uh, Happy reading.